Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Tapping with Tristan. We got a, this is a special show that we have here. This is not just one person, but we're going to be celebrating multiple people here uh, on this episode. We're going to be talking about East End Long Island basketball. East End Long Island basketball. And we're going to be naming the top 25 of all time. And some honorable mentions. So we're going to be giving a lot of flowers and showing a lot of love on, on, on this, this here show. And I couldn't be more happy to do it with this gentleman right here, who is my guy, Mr. Bronson Martin. Talk to him, B. Thanks for having me, Tristan. I'm, I'm looking forward to us having this discussion on the top players from East End. You know, there's a lot of history out there and it'll be nice for us to celebrate that with everyone as we go through these players. I agree. This 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 part of Long Island doesn't get the same recognition as other parts of Long Island, and it's probably not fair. So we're going to go ahead and take take full advantage of this while we can, while we got the technology, while we're still here, and while a lot of these guys are still here with us. Let's go ahead and celebrate them. You feel me? I'm excited. I know you are. Yes. Yes. I ready for you, man. We we did a lot of thorough digging and, and talking and cross-referencing. So let's just start with this honorable mention list, right? We got Mr. Dennis Ryan of Short and Way to River, 1996. Yeah, so Dennis Ryan, he played in League Six, which was the same league as West Hampton where I played. And, um, you know, he was a senior when I was in eighth grade. So I got to play against him. And he was someone we always looked up to in terms of wanting to stop. Shifty lefty, smooth, uh, could score on people consistently um just got a lot of buckets in high school you know and um we, we just want to show him some love because you know he was one of the nemesis that we had in league six back in 1996 so that you know that's why i want to mention dennis ryan congratulations dennis ryan well deserved here's your flowers boss man next up we got greg galliard miller place again 1996 Yes, yeah, so Greg, Greg uh, played in Miller Place and Shore, Wading River and Miller Place were the two teams that we had to go against consistently during our League Six run. And Greg was a great all-around player to shoot it, play defense, handle the ball. Um, he just was a great all-around player who um, was a staple for Miller Place's program, uh, led them to a lot of wins. And uh, he also played on the Empire State team for the Long Island region and um, was a very strong player there. So. You know, Greg Galliard, we want everyone to know about him as well, 1996. Moving right along. Congratulations on that, Greg. We're moving right along. We got Mr. Clarence Alonzo, Longwood, 2004, the homie. Yeah, so the Alonzo family, you know, I, I played with uh, Vern, Vern and Alonzo yep. when I was growing up, probably from 12 years old to 13 and 14 on his AAU team in Longwood. And his little younger brother, Clarence, would always be hanging out with us. He was a little kid, you know, and now I've read about him and he made all Long Island first team and he brought the, the Alonzo family to another level when it came to basketball. And, you know, we want people to know who he is and celebrate him a little bit. Celebrate it. Well-deserved, my man. He was a heck of a basketball player, man. Had a heck of a career. Definitely need to give him his flowers. Now we got Mr. George Hall, Comstock, class of 1980. OG. Yeah, so now we're, we're going back a little bit. George Hall, um, second team all Long Island in 1980. And then he played college basketball at Cornell University, 6'2 guard. So I have a soft spot for that because I went to Cornell University for basketball as well. But George had a great high school career and we want people to know who he is. Absolutely. And Comstock is a, is a school really known for lacrosse and football. So to have one of their guys on there for basketball, man, hats off to him. He's one of the guys. And we got next, we got Mr. Ed Stevenson, Patchaw, class of 1981, another OG. Yeah, so Ed Stevenson, you know, when I did research about him, Tristan, I didn't find a ton on him, but what I can tell people is that we heard from multiple people that he's, he was a good, great player. Um, first team all Long Island in 1980 and 1981. So that's, that's strong right there. Two that's time really first team all Long Island. That's strong, man. There was a lot of really good players in that time frame. So for you to be the first team all Long Island, you one of the top guys doing it, man. So we got to mention your name. So well-deserved, Mr. Ed Stevenson. Next, we got Mr. Chris Carlson, Eastport, 1991. Yes, yeah, so Chris Carlson, a great, great shooter back in his day at Eastport. Um, 
Chris uh, led Eastport uh, to the Class D title over Bridgehampton. And Bridgehampton, a strong program out in the East End. So to see that, that was impressive. Um, he scored over a thousand points in high school, and he was also was one of my assistant coaches when I was a freshman in high school. So that was pretty neat. Um, where Coach Race brought him in to kind of teach me a little bit. That's dope, man. So he's paying it forward even after his career is over. So he's yep. one of the, he's one of the legends out there. Class D beating Bridgehampton is a feat. That's a feat. That's a feat to be real proud of. Thousand point scorer. Got to mention him. Next, we got Mr. Mike Roof. I heard this name a lot, Mr. Mike Roof, Riverhead. Class of 1995. Yeah, Mike Ruth. Um, wow, my experience with Mike Ruth, I was in seventh grade sitting on the end of the bench in the playoff game when West Hampton was playing Riverhead at Riverhead. Place was packed, place was jumping, and Mike <laughs> Ruth put in work. I mean, I was I was scared being on the bench seeing him play. Like, he was explosive. Yeah. 5'8", guard, super athletic. Uh, he led, obviously, um, Riverhead to a win over our team, but then – he led Riverhead to a 79-76 win over Westbury in the 1995 Class B Long Island Championship game, scored 20 points, and, and brought Riverhead upstate to go play in the state tournament. So that was an impressive feat. Um, as a senior, he averaged 23.3 points a game. He was known as the franchise by his <laughs> teammates. Um, he was USA Today, All-American, honorable mention and uh, played college basketball at Suffolk Community College and scored 910 points during that career. So just want to give a shout out to Mike Ruth and his great career. He made first team all Long Island as well in his senior year. That guy can score because that's only two years right there. <laughs> so, yeah. He can score. Next, we got Mr. David Garrison, Bellport class of 1985. Yes, so David Garrison, you know, doing research, we didn't find out a ton about him, but multiple people told us that he was a great player during his day. Uh, yeah. We know he made all county during his time in high school, and, yeah. um, you know, he was just a very successful player. So we want to give him a shout out. Bellport has a strong program through and through. So this gentleman also led them. He was one of part, part of their uh, championship team, and he also had a big time buzzer beater in the Ooh. playoffs. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he, he hit a big time buzzer beater from one of my. One of our guys that helped us to get some of this information, he had a big time buzzer beater to get them their state title. Wow, that's impressive. So, so he's locked in, he's locked in in Bellport. Not just Bellport now, but we got to show him, show him some love for the whole East End. He's a legend out there. He's wow. a legend. Next, we got another Bellport guy, Mr. Todd Banks, Bellport, class of 1982. Yeah, so Todd Banks, wasn't a ton of information on him out there that we could find, but multiple people that we checked in said he's on the list. And what we do know is he was all Long Island first team and right. played at James Madison University after high school. So great player in high school and went on to play at the next level. Went on to play at the next level. So he's one of those guys, got to be mentioned. Hats off to Todd Banks and Bellport. Got a couple of names on the list already. We got Mr. Jamel Joyner from William Floyd High School, class of 1997. Talk to us. Yeah, so Jamel Joyner, the Floyd Col Colonials, he led them in scoring two years in a row, junior yeah. year and senior year. Um, he averaged 15 points a game as a senior and eight rebounds a game, first team all Long Island, and he led Floyd to the Class A state, uh, to the Class A title in Suffolk County, so in 1997. So that's impressive. Class A is the biggest schools, best competition usually. Yeah. So that's impressive what he did, and it led to him being first team all Long Island uh, in 1997. One of those guys got to be mentioned. Next, we got Mr. J.B. Bennett, William Floyd, 1999. Yes, J.B. Bennett. Uh, you know, both of us played with him on the Empire State team, so we, we know did. a little bit about his game. All-county senior year. Mm -hmm. um, just a hard-nosed player, hustled, yeah. um, to rebound, set picks, play mm -hmm. great defense. Mm -hmm. He was an you know, all-everything guy on the defensive end and yeah. didn't need the ball to be, make an impact in, on, on the game. So that was a special trait that he had. Yeah, yeah, high energy guy, throw lobs to him, get it off the glass. And uh, like you said, man, he impact the game a lot of ways, especially defensively and with his energy and his length. So definitely had to mention him. We got Mr. Marcel Street, William Floyd, again, class of 1999. Yeah, so Marcel, uh, super athletic, all county player uh, during his day, versatile, big, about 6'5". Yep. Um, explosiveness. 
Um, but Marcel Street had a great high school career, which continued on after that. He went to go play at Suffolk Community College uh, under Rich Race, who used to coach West Hampton, and he won uh, two National Junior College Championships in 2003 and 2004. He had a 52-game winning streak. So he's, he's a big part of that. That Suffolk was ringing out. <laughs> yes, it was. My man, my man Richie Race out there getting everybody going. We got next, moving right along, we got Mr. Kenny Carter, East Hampton, class of 1978. That's right, Kenny Carter. So from a big time school out on the East End. Uh, not a ton of information on him on the internet, but we do know that he was first team All-Long Island in 1978. Mm -hmm. And then from multiple people that we talked to, uh, we know that he's that guy and he deserves to be on the list. And he's on the list. He's one of those top guys, man, going back. We, we've we been doing our research and in, in, in cross-referencing with a lot of people that know basketball out there in the East End, and they all mention his name. So hats off to him. Next, we got Mr. Mikey Russell from East Hampton, class of 2008. Yeah, so that's, that's a name I heard a lot after I graduated in 2000. Uh, you know, he had a good career at East Hampton, first team all Long Island in, in 2008. And second team all Long Island in 2007 and 2006. So basically three years in a row, he made either the first team or second team. So he needs to be recognized for that and the great career that he had at East Hampton. That's off to Mikey Russ, man. I heard that guy can score. We got next, you know these guys, you know these guys, Mr. Dwayne <laughs> Sanders, West Hampton, class of 1999. That's right. Dwayne Sanders, one of my teammates, uh, class of 99. He, he won a state title with us in 1998. Uh, first team. All Long Island in 1999. Uh, he won two state titles, public and federation in 1998, and was just a great player down low, 6'6", block shots, dunk on people, played yeah. tough defense. He, he was that the guy who clogged the middle, caused yeah. problems. One of his best games was against your team, Amityville, when he was a sophomore. Yep. Um, he scored 16 points, kept us in the game, gave, gave me confidence as a freshman, um, and just held his own against Ollie Hinkson, which I thought was impressive because Ollie was on the first team All Long Island that year. So, yeah. Dwayne, great player, and you wanted to recognize him. As he should be, as he should be. Like you said, man, playing against Oliver and those guys, man, there's some good players playing against Amityville and, and, and doing their thing. He has to be recognized. Next, we have Mr. Quentin Brooks from West Hampton, class of 1993. Yeah, so with our program, that's the OG. He's, he's the number one guy. He's the guy I have the most look up to the most, and, you know, he's that guy for me. And for our players from my generation, 1993, um, he led West Hampton to their first class B uh, title, their first class BCD title. Wow. Um, he was second or third team all state, I believe, in his senior year. Um, had big games against Amityville, Copeg, and Bayshore. Uh, they won against Amityville and Copeg, but lost against Bayshore. But that's kind of set the tone for our program yeah. during the 90s. And the OG got to be recognized for that great career. Went on to play at Hamilton College and uh, after high school. So. Overall, great career. Absolutely got to mention those. And you mentioned three really, really good programs that, that he played well against. So hats off to my man, Quentin. Next, we got Pete Donahue from West Hampton, class of 1994. Yeah, so Pete was my guy. Like, you know, Pete wore number 44, and then I wore number 44 because of Pete. Right. So that was kind of who I wanted to be, like emulate. Like he, he could shoot it, dribble it. He's an all-around versatile player, wing, 6'4". Led, led uh, West Hampton to the Class B uh, title in 1994. So that was their second in a row. He was all Long Island, small schools player of the year for Suffolk County. Um, and then he went on to play um, at Binghamton College. So he continued his career after high school as well. So gotta very be, good player. Got to be recognized. Man, I got a lot of good players on this list. And we didn't even get all the way to the top 25 yet, man. This is going to be right. exciting. Next, we got Kyle Bronskill from Southampton. Again, class of 1994. Yeah, so Kyle, you know, he was on the Southampton team that beat the West Hampton team for the small schools championship. Wow. Great player, tough nosed, um, you know, and he wound up leading um, the Southampton team that year and he uh, ended up the second team all Long Island. So for that, we want to recognize him for the career he had and the big time moments he had in big games. You absolutely, know? absolutely. Next, Terry Smith. Southampton, class of 1999. Yeah, so Terry Smith, I, you know, I've known him since I was in seventh grade because he was at Greenport as an eighth grader, starting on varsity, I believe. And I wanted to be like him. I wanted to start on varsity. So I was like, Terry starts on varsity in 
Greenport, I'm going to start on varsity in West Hampton in eighth grade. So I did it, but that was kind of who I looked up to. Wow. And then um, I played against them in summer league that year. So that was the first time I met him. And uh, I played with his brother as well, I think, that summer up the island, Sam Smith, uh, some basketball, like pickup games and stuff on weekends. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how I kind of learned about Terry. Terry um, won a state title in 1999, uh, second team all Long Island. Great three-point shooter, tough nose. He was a great running back in football, too. People don't realize, like, some of these athletes are great at multiple sports. He was yeah. one of them. Um, just a good guy, you know. Um, so Terry Smith, we want to recognize him. Yep, uh, I, I played against his team. They beat us. Uh, so hats off to him, man. He's a winner. He's a winner. State title uh, champion, state champion, New York State. That's not easy to do, bro. So hats off to Terry Smith. Next, we got Mr. Juan Leonardo at Southampton. Again, class of 1994. Yeah, so Juan Leonardo was on that team with Kyle Bronskill in 94 that beat my West Hampton team when I was a kid. Um, <laughs> explosive point guard, smooth early to mid nineties. And uh, he was kind of the quarterback of that team. And, and people just, you know, know the name out on the East end, you know, his name was always up coming up when I was a kid and I always remembered it. And then I saw him playing. I realized why. So yeah. for that, we want to recognize Juan for, you know, his great efforts in high school and the things he accomplished. I think this is dope, man. We're spreading all of the different eras, man. We got guys coming from all over the place. Uh, so let's go to the next one. We got Mr. Mika Snowden from cinema riches. 2019, class of 2019. Yeah, so Santa Mariches, I mean, they've, they've been good the past few years. Um, you know, Amika was on first team all Long Island in 2019, and they won a lot in that year. So for that, we got to recognize Mika for what he accomplished. He's a great big big guy down low. Uh, you know, in the internet age, Facebook age, you see videos posted of him catching alley-oops. You know, I'm like, oh, he's pretty good. You know? Yeah, so, they're cooking right there. I see yeah. the Real-time footage. They be tweeting it out during the game. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what it is right now. So, yeah, my man is big time out there. Young fella, fresh out of high school. We got, this seems to be his teammate, Mr. Sean Braithwaite, Cinema Riches, class of 2019. That's right. So, as you know, to have multiple players from the same team on the All Long Island team, you know your team was cooking people. <laughs> yeah, so, you know... <laughs> So that was that 2019 team that they had that I believe won the Long Island chance, uh, Class C championship. Sean Braithwaite, first team on Long Island, 2019 as well. So I wanted to recognize him. Hats off to my guy. Next, we got Troy Cousins, Cinema Riches, 1987. Yeah, so now we're going back about 20 years. Oh, okay. um, well, 30 years, sorry. 30 years. Yeah, 30, 30 plus years, long time. But that's a name, you know, I've always heard the name on the East End, you know. So when I thought of like what players we could kind of put on our mention list, I, I went on and did a little research. I saw that he was second team all along in 1987. So that made me realize why his name's been mentioned, you know. But he was a he was a baller back then. Yep. So uh we wanted to talk about him a little bit. This last name we might see a couple of times, but this one right here is Mr. Jerome Manning. Cinema Riches class of 1997. Yeah, so so that 1997 Cinema Riches team was 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 very good. Um, they were in Class C that year, and, and they won a lot of games. Jerome Manning was a big part of that. He was like a, about a six one, six two wing, athletic, scored around the basket, could hit the short little runners and stuff like that, and, and could just score a lot of points. Second team All Long Island 1997. The Duke of Ball man. We want you know we want to recognize him for that. We got a lot of hoopers on here, man. A lot of hoopers, a lot of different style of play, but hoopers nonetheless. Next, we got Mr. Aki Anderson, Cinema Riches slash Greenport, class of 2020. Yeah, so Aki Anderson started at Greenport initially, and then he transferred, I believe, his junior year to Cinema Riches, class right. of 2020, like you said. I mean, he could score in bunches. Um you know, he finished his career with 2,117 points. You know, that's a lot of points. Doing that up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All Long Island first team, 2020. Uh, second team, 2019. So he was on the All Long Island teams two years in a row. New York State Player of the Year, Class B in 2020. So he had a, a great career. That's dope. That's dope. He was out there doing this thing, man. He definitely deserves to be talked about. This is another last name that we might see. You know what I mean? This is this one rings out on the on on the East End, Mr. Clarence Trent, Cinema Riches, class of 1991. Yeah, you know the funny thing is about Clarence Trent, 
I'm friends with him on Facebook and someone posted a video of him putting in work down low on some dude <laughs> at Stony Brook <laughs> today. So I saw the video today. It brought back good memories. But Clarence, great footwork down low, um, scored around the area. He was sort of like the mailman, could score down low, but could hit the little mid-range jumper. Yeah. Uh, 1991, like you said, first team all on Island. So, you know, yeah. he, he was a baller back then. That's big. That's big. Congratulations to all of the guys so far. We got a couple more names on this honorable mention, then we getting into the meat and potatoes of this of this thing. Top twenty five. So next up, we got Mr. Nick Thomas, Bridgehampton, class of nineteen ninety six. Yeah. So Nick Thomas. Uh, quick story about Nick Thomas. You know, when I went on my recruiting visit to NYU in uh, two thousand. Um, Nick Thomas was point guard at NYU and I met him there. He was kind of like my host. He walked me around, showed me stuff. So that was pretty neat. Yeah. And I played against him one year early, uh, like when I was really young, mm -hmm. but Nick accomplished a lot in high school, second team all Long Island in 1996. Um, he also won a state title in 1996 and then went on to play at NYU, like I said. And the cool thing is that he's now the head coach at Santa Marucci. So Essentially, he's brought it back to the East End where he's giving back to younger kids and showing them like things he learned and just growing it out there, you know, on the sports front and on the just growth potential of kids. You know, it's great. That's what we love to see. We love to see gentlemen pay it forward. And it's really cool to have a great career and then get into coaching and start really building young men up. So hats off to my guy, Nick Thomas, uh, Bridgehampton, class of 1996. Next, we got Mr. Charles Manning, Jr., Bridgehampton class of 2016. Yeah, so Charles Manning Jr. We may hear that name again. As you mentioned, um, class D, all county, all Long Island two times, um, all state. He won a state title in, in uh, you know, his high school career and was class D player of the year, state player of the year. So, um, you know, he was on the East End for a little bit and then he transferred to Lou High. So he wasn't on the East End for a very long time, but we want to still recognize him for what he accomplished because what he accomplished is pretty impressive on the East End. Yeah, absolutely. So just because he didn't like really lock in, lock in, he would probably be higher on his list, but he was definitely worth being mentioned. So hats off to him, man. And uh, we look forward to just watching his career continue to develop and play out. Last on the list, we got Mr. Daryl Henby, Bridgehampton, class of 1987. Yeah, so Daryl Henby, great, great player back in his day. Um, he played with the great Troy Bow um, for two years and the great Bobby Hobson at Bridgeham for one year, uh, and he won a state title. And I don't know a ton about Daryl Henby, but I know that from what I've been told that he, he was a great player from the standpoint that a lot of the things you didn't see in the box score, he did on the court, yep. whether it was defense, um, yep. running the team, um, setting the tone for everybody. So from that standpoint, just a great, great player. Um, that needs to be recognized for the great Bridgeham program that we all know about. Story program and one of the main cogs in the wheel. So he had to be recognized and we appreciate this whole honorable mention list. But now let's go ahead and get to the meat and potatoes of this. Let's get to the heart of what we were here for. This top 25, right? This is why everybody's here for this top 25. So many names. A lot of these names can be moved around. We understand that, but I think we did a really good job and I appreciate you being very thorough. And I think we got it. I think I think we got it, got, got a good list here for the people. So without further ado, let's get into this top 25, Bronson. All right, let's do it. I'm excited. Number 25, we got Mr. Will Brown, Miller Place, 1989, class of 1989. Yeah, so Will Brown, Miller Place Panthers. First statement, he averaged 35 a game as a senior. So that's just incredible. That's, <laughs> you know, that's outrageous. Yeah, you're averaging 35. That means you're dropping 50 on people, 45 on people consistently. So 35 a, a game a senior year, earned all state honors that year. All Long Island selection his senior year. Uh, Three-time all-county player. During his senior year, he scored over 50 points twice. He scored 53 points and 51 points, respectively, in two different games. So that was just a high school career. Um, after that, he went on to play college basketball at Dowling College, start, was a starter for three years, and he's the only player in Dowling history to score over 1,000 points and to tally 500 assists. So you know he ran the show, and he did a good job scoring the ball when he had to. Um, member of the Suffolk County Hall of Fame and uh, – 
was the men's basketball coach at Albany. So he got into coaching and giving back to kids, and that's great to see. He's checking all the boxes, dude. Yeah. Hey, he's going level, level, and now he's paying back to – he's out there. That's some Mark Price type stuff right there, man. I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. Next, next right here, we – we 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 we've been doing our homework, dude. This is we we this going back. I'm excited to hear about this one. Number 24, Mr. Ronnie Baxter, Southampton class of 1970. Yes, that's that's Ronnie. So Southampton Mariners, the famous team that a lot of people have heard about, 61 game win streak from 1968 to 1970. They won two county titles during that time and lost the third county title to North Babylon in 1970. But 61 straight games, I mean, everyone hears about Clarence Foots Walker, who was his backcourt mate. It was this guy right here, Ronnie Kitchen Baxter. So they made a deadly tandem. I mean, best backcourt in New York State um, at that time, during that period of time. His nickname was Kitchen. And people ask why it's Kitchen. Well, I found out he's named Kitchen Baxter because whenever teammates came to his house to invite him to play basketball with them, his mother didn't let him out until he cleaned the kitchen. Kitchen. So, you know, he had, he had to clean the kitchen, you know? So that's, that was his nickname. Um, one Southampton legend tells of St. John's uh, head coach, Lou Carnesecca, the famous Lou, uh, used, used a video of Baxter's jump shot to teach his players perfect form. So, you know, he knew how to shoot the basketball. Um, and, you know, he was just a great, great player with Foots Walker. And that's why we want to mention him because, you know, that, he was part of that great team. He deserved to be on the list. First That's right. of all, if Lou Conaseca, who's a Hall of Fame coach, is using you, then 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 that right there probably could get you on the list. Then the man's nickname is Kitchen. Yeah, cooking people. So he's cooking, bro. <laughs> he's a chef. So you definitely deserve to be on the list, OG. Moving right along, we got number 23, Mr. Gerald Crenshaw, Greenport, class of 2002. Correct. So Gerald Crenshaw. Unfortunately, he passed away last year, and I just wanted to mention that. You know, sorry that that happened. It's just always sad. Um, yeah. But to touch on his career, you know, he was a great – first and foremost, he played for the Greenport Porters, class of 2002, like you said. His football numbers retired at Greenport. So he had a great football career. Um, rushed for over 5,000 yards, 5,481 to be exact. Scored 81 touchdowns. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. So as good of a football player as he was, he was he, he was a great basketball player. And I couldn't find a ton of stats on him, but I always remember he's only two years younger than me. So when he when I graduated, that's all I heard about in East End was Gerald Crenshaw this, Gerald Crenshaw that. I do know he scored 48 points in a game in 1999. So unless you're good, you're not scoring 48 points. So yeah, that's, that's impressive. Cool. And that's a lot of shot making right there, man. And, and, and I really believe off top, he was one of the top scorers in not just the county, but in Long Island. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, he was a great dual sport athlete. He represented the school very well and the East End very well. So RIP, we want to give his flowers to him and hopefully his family gets the chance to see this, man, because that's beautiful. Number 22, we both know this guy, Mr. Will McClurkin, Longwood class of 2000. Yes, so that's my class. So Will McClurkin, big Will, as, as we called him. I played with him um, when I was younger, 13 and 14 on his AAU team with all the long, longer guys. Um, you know, he had a, he's a great player, you know, unfortunately he passed away some years ago, um, you know, and that was a sad time when that happened. But, you know, speaking on his high school career, man, he averaged just under 23 points a game his senior year. You know, yep. he led Longwood to the class A title. They beat my team by a point in the semifinals. Yep. Um, but he then led his team to the Long Island class A title. Yeah. Then they went upstate where they lost in overtime to Ben Gordon's Mount Vernon team for the state title. So he got right to the mountaintop, man. He accomplished a lot. He led that team. He was the leader. Um, all state, all Long Island, Suffolk County Player of the Year um, in, in 2000, and uh, just a great player overall. And then after um, high school, he went on to play at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, UMBC, yeah. before transferring to Marist College. Yeah. And at Marist College, he averaged about 16 points a game and eight rebounds his senior year, and then played professional basketball in Ireland thereafter. So he had a long career. That's dope, dude. That's dope, man. So he, you know, he made a career out of basketball, man, and he, and, and he impacted a lot of people positively, man. So RIP to Big Will, and we're very appreciative of being able to celebrate him right now. So yep. 
my man. Let's go to number 21. We know this gentleman very well too. Mr. Tamian Trent, Cinema Riches, class of 2000. <laughs> yes, so Tamian Trent. I, you know, I grew up playing with him on all-star teams when I was nine years old. We, we made all the teams together. So it was fun. Great player from a young age. Um, the name may sound familiar because we talked about under honorable mention, Clarence Trent, his older brother. So it runs in the family basketball greatness here. Yep. Um, all county three times, all Long Island senior year, all state three times. Yep. Um, so he had a great high school career. He then went on to attend Suffolk Community College where he played for Rich Race and he won a national junior college championship uh, in 2003 for Suffolk Community Clippers. And then he went to play at Fairway Dickinson. And I saw him play on TV in the NCAA tournament against Dar uh, Darren Williams, man. He held his own, yeah, you know, so. holding it down, man. Like, like, he was a good player. Like you said, there was a natural progression that, that, that came with his game, man. But he was, a, he was very deceiving. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because he didn't have the typical basketball frame. You would That's think, right. oh, man, this guy, we're going to give him business out there, man. But he was a very, very smart player. He was a big, strong guy. You know what I mean? And he knew how to utilize that size because he would post guys up. Like you said, he can shoot from far. Oh, yeah. yep. Excellent player. You know what I mean? And, and he was a winner. He was a winner. He was a winner. So hats off to my guy, Tane. Number 20. I like this guy right here. I, I got to see some footage of this guy. Mr. Jarrell White, Bellport, class of 2019. Yeah, so Jarrell White, man, class of 2019, two-time All Long Island player, 2018-2019 uh, at Bellport. Um, now, with Bellport's history, he is the all-time leader in points and rebounds. So that's impressive because that's super impressive. Yeah, that's super, with all the talent, rich talent they have there. That's super impressive. Four-time All-State player. Oof. Scored over 21, scored 2,100 points in his high school career. That's over 2,000 points. That's incredible. That's incredible. So we got to have him on the list. And a thousand, and a thousand plus rebounds or so. So that's I'm right. It was a glass eater too, man. Got to, got to mention him. I mean, and he's still writing his story, so he right, might yep. even be higher, yeah. right? And there's a couple of guys we we wrestled with this one a lot, but he had to be on the list, hands down. Where we put him on the list was 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 going to be, you know, what I'm saying, up for debate, but he's on the list, man. And congratulations to him, well deserved. I know this guy right now. I know this guy real real good. You know what I mean? Number 19, we got Mr. Bronson Martin, West Hampton. Class of 2000. That's you, right, bro. So that's, so that's, that's me. You. <laughs> that is you, bro. Yeah, that's me. So let's see. Class of 2000, two state titles, Federation and Public in 1998, uh, all county three times, all Long Island, all state three times, scored over 1,700 points, 104 wins, eight losses over five years. So the eight people I lost to, I respect because I didn't lose much. Um, number retired at West Hampton and then played on the Empire State team and then Recruited to play basketball at Cornell, and I played there for a little bit. So that's kind of my career. Had a fun time. Got you know, got to play with you and a lot of great players. And it was a lot of fun, man. One of the best shooters ever. One of the top shooters to come out of Long Island, man. Deadly. If if it was, it was just just take the ball out, lefty. And one one vote shy of being the player of the year. So you right there, dude. You end up losing to Will McClurkin. So that's right. Yep. Yeah. God bless him. They beat you on the head to head matchup. It ended up being for not just advancing the playoffs, but for that accolade. Right. <laughs> so that's how it goes. That's how it goes. But that's the beauty of sports, man. We can yeah. sit as, as adults, man, and, and, and look at the beauty of it, man, and be thankful. So I want to celebrate and congratulate you, man, for a job well done as you Thank being you. etched in as a legend for the East End. Thank you. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Well deserved, boss. We got number 18, Mr. Jermaine Holman, West Hampton, class of 1998. Yeah, so that was one of my teammates, man. He he was one of the guys who was on that historic 28-0 undefeated state title team in 1998. He was part of the leadership on that team. Um, he was all county three times, all state multiple times, New York State. Class B Co-State Player of the Year in 1998. Had his number retired at West Hampton Beach. Um, you know, he was like the heartbeat of our team in terms of like toughness and whatnot. Scored 1,289 points in high school. 
played on the Empire State team. Uh, just had a great five-year career on the varsity. I mean, you know, he was a great leader for me and someone I played with from a very young age. Um, then he was recruited to play at New York Tech, and he's one of the few people to score over 1,000 points as well in college, which he did at New York Tech. So he had a, for a formidable career on the high school level and college level, and we want to celebrate that. Congratulations. Congratulations to Jermaine, man. Job well done. You are etched in as a legend in the East End. You know what I'm saying? So here's your flowers, bro. Well deserved. This is seeming like a trend here. We got number 17, Mr. Dale Menendez, West Hampton, 1998. Yeah, so, you know, West yeah, so we have three West Hampton in a row, you know, like the main thing that I wanted to do was just kind of separate people by accolades and Dale and Jermaine are very similar in that they both were seniors. Uh, I'm on that historic team. Dale was the point guard. And I always view the point guard as a quarterback. And if you're the quarterback, um, I feel that, you know, you get the most accolades that your team wins. You get the most blame if your team loses, just like football. So Dale had a great career. He won, he won state titles as well during the same time Jermaine and I did. Um, all county two times, all Long Island one time. Uh, Class B, co-state player of the year in 1998 with Jermaine Holman. My high school coach really didn't want to give it to one or the other. He wanted them both to share it because that was deserving for both of them. You know, they both did a great, accomplished a great thing. He um, it. Yeah, it's just hard to pick one over the other. So number retired at West Hampton Beach. In three years, he scored 999 points. And as I said, he was the energizer bunny. So my whole thing of why we have him ahead of Jermaine is because simple accolades. Dale was Suffolk County Player of the Year, 1998. You know, so that's why he's a, a notch ahead of Jermaine, and that's why I put the order that way. Well deserved, man. He, he needed to just make one more free throw for the thousand. He missed the free throw. That's right. We got. I always tell him. Him. I always tell him I'll give him one of my points. So he's we a gotta, thousand. Yeah, we got to give him a free throw. Yeah. Man. He got. He got. He got to make that free throw, man. For that, man, we're gonna give him a hard time for that. But well deserved, man. The quarterback and point guard for a twenty-eight and no team. That's his story. That's a story, man. And congratulations. I mean, because we just ran through three guys from the same school. Well deserved. That guys are legends out there, man. Well deserved, man. Congratulations to all three of you guys. Number 16, Mr. Ryan Creighton, Greenport, 2009. Hey. Heard this name a lot. I heard that name forever, man. That, that name is etched in stone out in, in Greenport and on the East End in general. I mean, he's one of the top two scorers in Greenport history, him mm -hmm. and Al Edwards. Um, he made it to three New York State Final Fours with Al Edwards as his head coach. He scored 2,799 points in high school Ooh. over a five-year career. So at that time, it made him the all Long Island, you know, the Long Island all-time leading scorer in 2011, and he was only second in the state to Lance Stevenson, who we all know from Coney Island. Uh, you know, he made Uncle Jeff fall like two yeah, years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got highlights, and you know, <laughs> yeah. he, he clowned. Um, you know, so he scored a ton of points in high school. Um, and uh, he, he broke Kenny Wood's scoring record, uh, you know, back in 2009. And Kenny Wood had actually broken Al Edwards' record, who was Ryan's coach. So it all kind of is interconnected. Look at that symmetry right there. Yeah. yeah. Um, other accolades from Ryan. I mean, All Long Island first team two times, 2008, 2009. All Long Island second team, 2006 and 2007. So he essentially was All Long Island four years in a row. That's not normal. You got to be great to be accomplishing that. And That's he did it. So, um, you know, hats off to him, man. Resume is super strong, but again, this is one that you and I wrestled with, with the guy Jarrell White, just off the strength of the competition that they see. Bellport Class A and, and doing what he did, I was like, man, he might need to go high, and he might, might. This is, this is going to be a topic of debate, especially he's still playing. Greenport doesn't usually play as strong a talent. Yep, yep. You know what I mean? Competition. However, However, that resume is super strong. Yes. Super strong. So we, totally knew agree. Was, we knew he was going to be on the list. We just didn't know where. He fell to number 16. So we're going to give him his flowers at 16. That's right. Hats off to you, boss, man. Well deserved, Mr. Ryan Creighton. Number 15, digging in the crates once again, Mr. Bob Vacker, Sag Harbor, 1968. 
Yeah. So, I mean, I didn't, I never knew about Bob back at supply like a year ago when I um, spoke to one of my high school coaches and he's like, yeah, he was a great shooter from Pearson Sag Harbor area. I was like, Oh, okay. So always file the name away. And then yeah. when you and I started researching for this project of top 25, man, I learned more about him. There's not a ton of information on him about high school, yeah. but I do know he was all Long Island in 1968. He starred for Pearson high school. Uh, then he attended Quinnipiac college yeah. and he scored 1,265 points in college. Um, and is in the Quinnipiac Sports Hall of Fame. And lastly, after college, he was drafted in the NBA by the Milwaukee Bucks in 1973 in the ninth round as a 13th pick. Now, he didn't really play at all in the NBA, but he was drafted. And, you know, that's just incredible to be drafted. I don't care what sport you're in. So we got to celebrate Bob Vacker for what he accomplished on a high school level, college level, and even making it to the NBA. That's super strong, dude. You got Milwaukee Bucks attached to your name and you're doing your numbers in high school and college, and you're one of the top shooters from probably ever. You know what I mean? They wasn't, they didn't really had a three-point line. <laughs> there was no three-point line. So, you know, he might have been one of them marksman type dudes. So hats off to Bob Vack of the OG. We got another, we got another big name here. Number 14, I've heard this name before. Mr. Bobby Hobson, Bridgehampton, class of 1990. Man, that name on the East End is well known, man. You know, what he accomplished at Bridgehampton, he didn't win any state titles, but what he accomplished, a resume, it's hard to match. Um, Bridgehampton Killer Bees, as you said, class of 1990. Bobby did pass away a year or so ago, and I wanted to recognize that. And, and you know, it was a sad time when that happened on the East End because of who he is. He was a great person and just a great legacy that he left behind. But um, his high school resume, all county, all Long Island, all Long Island first team two years in a row, 1989-1990, all state. Incredible score, long and athletic from what I've heard, explosive, only six feet tall. Um, scored 1,720 points in high school. Um, holds the Bridgehampton single game scoring record of 52 points in a game. Cooking. Um, then after high school, he went on to play at Wagner College, inducted into the Wagner College Hall of Fame, scored 1,568 points in college. So he kept that consistency from high school to college, and it was impressive to see. Well deserved. That he's he's not he, he's a legend. That that he's a definition of a legend. And again, R.I.P. I hope that his family gets a chance to see this and just let him know and let the family know that he is and will always be appreciated. You know what I mean? So hats off to him. Well deserved. Number thirteen, Mr. Thanks. Courtney Pritchett, Cinema Riches slash Southampton. Class of 2000. This is the third person from the class of 2000. Yeah, so so that's actually the fourth. You had Will McClurk, and Tammy Trent, yeah, myself, and, and now Courtney. Yeah, it's the fourth yeah, person fourth. from the class of 2000. Yeah, tough, tough class. Woo. So Courtney, man, I, I grew up playing with Courtney since I was eight years old at summer basketball camps. And mm -hmm. then we played on all the all-star teams for Suffolk County through like 14 years old. And then I played against him in high school. Um, so Great, great guy. You know, I played with him all those years, like I said. Um, Courtney played at Santa Marichas first in high school. Um, and the crazy thing that makes me believe why he's so great is because if he had stayed at Santa Marichas, they would have won a state title. They would have won a state title. But he wanted to go back home, man, and home was Southampton. So he went back his junior year to Southampton. And what did he do? He leads them to a state title. They beat he my team. Yeah, they won a state title. They win the class B public school state title. They beat my team. They beat your team. And, like, that's just what he did. He's a great player. I mean, he was um, resume. It's ridiculous. Uh, state title, 1999. All Long Island, three times. Two first team All Long Island selections. One second team All Long Island selection. All county, three times. All state, three times. Class B New York State Player of the Year in 1999, which is strong. strong. You know, you 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 accomplished that in, 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 in like your day. That's that's tough. That's tough. Um, and, um, you know, then he, then he attended, after high school, he attended Wagner College to play basketball. So he followed in Bobby Hobson's footsteps. And also following in Bobby's footsteps, he made the Wagner Basketball Hall of Fame. Um, so just like an immensely talented player, man, uh, over the years. Great composure on the court. Not the most athletic, but super smart. High basketball IQ. Knew right. how to draw the foul. Knew when to pass the ball. Knew when to shoot it. And in my mind, he's really, he was like a, a version of Chauncey Billups, man. Like, yeah. that's the type of player. Slow down, didn't even move fast. Great footwork on the court. Great ball handling skills. Just a great skill set. So that's kind of him, man. 
I agree with that comparison. I think that's a very fair comparison. Great pace, you know what I'm saying? Very, very mature game and very clutch. We're, we're, we're my sophomore year. Uh, we went out there, they was ranked number one in the state and we had them on the ropes. Their fans were leaving. Oh man, <laughs> Amityville is about to upset Southampton. And we started fumbling the bag and making mistakes, not capitalizing. And we left the door crack for them and he took over the game. He took over the game, hit a lot of big shots, made a lot of big plays. They go on to win the whole thing. And he earned it. He earned Definitely, it. Yeah. He earned it. And this gentleman is a winner. So congratulations to him. And that's really cool to see our 13 and 14 parallel so crazy. Yeah. That's crazy when you think about it. From the East End, two big time players going to Wagner and end up in all the thing. Right. That's pretty dope. That's pretty dope. So a lot of rich tradition out there that is getting highlighted inside of this, this, you know, this show that we're doing. So I hope it rings out, man, because a lot of people that deserve their flowers. This one right here can fill it up. We got at number 12, Rob, Rob Hobson, William Floyd, 1994. We got the class of 1994. Yes, so Rob, Robert Hobson, Bobby Hobson. You know, you you and I both played for his dad on the Empire State team, man. His he dad did. was like, yeah, his dad unfortunately passed away some years ago, but his dad was a great offensive coach. Like, I always remember when he would run these plays where I'd come off double screens like Steph Curry, I'd be wide open. It was like playing out like at a little store. I, I, I had all the time to shoot, you know? So great, great basketball mind. His dad was a great player in his day. Yeah. And we're here to focus on his son, man, Bobby Hoxton. And um, played for the William Floyd Colonials, class of 94, like you said. Four-time All-Long Island player. Three first-team selections. One second-team selection. So freshman year through senior year. Scored 2,532 points in high school. You know, just filling it up. Um, so after a great high school career, he went and played college basketball at Indiana for a bit. For, I think, one or two years. And then he transferred to uh, Rutgers and played for the Scarlet Knights. And I remember watching him on TV. And he finished his career out strong. A great role player on that team. And... I yeah. think he played with like you know Herb Lamanza or you know you know you know yeah, some of those guys back in the day. Lamanza, yeah, I think yeah, Jeff yeah. Billy, the little point guard. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah that's yeah. right, Jeff Billy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, nah, he was on some teams, man. He was over there with Indiana before Bobby Knight started choking people out. <laughs> he said, "I gotta go. I gotta go. I'm gonna go it wasn't for east. him. I'm gonna go back east. I don't need that in my life." Yeah. So, he's a legend. I mean, tall, rangy, can shoot, did a little bit of everything. I mean, man, he can do the score. He can score and like high, high IQ, understandably so. His dad had a high basketball IQ. I definitely yep. remember that. And he was, you know, a perfectionist. Do it over, do it over, do it over. Yes. So hats off to him, man. He definitely deserves it. This number 11 probably got the coolest nickname in this thing. We got Mr. Carl Johnson. Nickname is Pujat from Bridgehampton, class of 1980. That's right. Pujak. So Carl Johnson, class of 1980, Bridgeham Killer Bees. He won three straight Class D New York State championships as a player. So 1978, 79, and 1980. And he was the point guard. So if you're the point guard, you run in the show. If y'all winning, it's because mainly because of what you're doing, running the team and controlling everything. So that's that's impressive. Uh, class, he was first team all Long Island um, in 1980. Unbelievable point guard on both sides of the ball from what I've heard from multiple people. Quick, athletic. You know, um, he, he went at people, you know, he was a tough player. Um, Suffolk County Hall of Fame, New York State Hall of Fame. Um, attended LIU Southampton to play point guard there in college. So he continued his career on. Um, after college, he then came back to Bridgehampton and became the head coach after the great John Niles had coached his team wow. to those state titles. So that was pretty cool how he came back and continued the tradition of coming, going back to where he, he grew up and giving back. And, um, Four state titles as a Bridgeham coach, 1996, 1997, 1998, so a three-peat, and then again in 2015. So he had two three-peats, one as a player and one as a coach. Who does that, you know? That's unmet. Who's doing that? Yeah, you know, it's just impressive. Um, so he's the first person in New York State history to win a state championship as a player and, and as a coach. He's just a really good guy, you know, humble. Oh. A lot of these things I didn't know about him until I did this research with you, and you know, he, he just never really talked about himself when we would play against his teams and stuff. Just a very humble guy. So we're going to talk about him. He's well decorated and he deserves to be on his list. 
And what a nickname like Pooja, his grandmother had to give him that. His grandmother had to give him that name, Pooja. Legend. He's a legend That's on the right. end as a player and a coach. That's strong right there, dude. I mean, my good. And this is segueing into our number 10. We in the top right. team now. We in the top right. team. And, and this is the, that's an interesting, you know, segue for this next gentleman. Mr. Al Edwards, Greenport, class of 1972. Yes. So Al Edwards. So Al Edwards is the head coach of Greenport Porters. He actually <laughs> coached Ryan Creighton, who we talked about number 16 on this top 25 list. Um, so he so he's one of the top two scorers. Al, Al Edwards is one, Ryan Creighton's the other. That's a pretty cool connection that he coached the other top score. Um, Al Edwards was the first Suffolk County player to ever score over 2,000 points in a four-year high school career. That's tough right there. I mean, 2,000 hey. points, there, there's no three-point line back then. No, they're not shooting threes. Yeah. What is the three-point so, Yeah. So yeah. he finished his career with 2,117 points. Uh, the record stood until Kenny Wood broke that record in 1988, 1989 wow. season. Wow. And Al Edwards was all Long Island in 1972. So that was a great high school career. Wow. He continued on to play D1 ball at East Carolina. He averaged 11 points a game as a senior there. And then after his college career was over, he came back to East, um, you know, you know, back East to Long Island to Greenport and became the head coach. And he coached a lot of great programs. And, you know, he coached Gerald Crenshaw. Yeah. And he coached Ryan Creighton. And, you know, he had some great teams. That's amazing. And, um, you know, they made it to three New York State Final Fours with him as a coach. So that's pretty impressive. He's a winner. And and and, and, and just like Pujak, big-time player, big-time coach. That's amazing. So we got two things that parallel each other. We got Courtney Pritchard and Hobson, and we got yeah. we got Edwards and Johnson. Man, look at us making this list together, man. We <laughs> see it's coming together. It's coming together, dude. Number nine, number nine, dude. We got another legend. We got another legend. This is a golden era in basketball out in the uh, East End. This this time frame, we got Mr. Jamie Latney, Greenport, class of 1984. We're on a common theme here with Greenport. They have some tough players over this whole time, man. They got some guys. Yeah. So Jamie Latney, I mean, when I did my research with you, we didn't find a lot of information on him, but we heard about it from everybody. Everybody. And everybody that we cross-referenced with named his name. That's right. So what we did find out about him, six foot six, wing, athletic, two-time all-county, Averaged 25 points a game his senior year of high school. All Long Island, 1984. Only Greenport player to ever score 1,000 points in high school and in college. That's a pretty neat fact. Wow. Um, after high school, he played at Fairleigh Dickinson College. So he basically went where Tamia Trent played as well. So that's pretty cool about yeah. that little connection there. And then he played professionally in the CBA and in Europe thereafter. So he had a long career. He had a long career, man. Uh, a, a nice career. And he's one of the guys. Top 10, strong right. resume, and we have to celebrate him, Mr. Jamie Latin. Number eight, this is another name that, that, that I've heard for a very long time, even out of Emeryville. This name right here comes up with all the OGs that I speak to directly. At number eight, we got Troy Bow, Bridgehampton, class of 1987. Yeah, that name is loud and strong on the East End, man. It's been around forever, and that's one of the biggest things I ever heard from Bridgehampton. I mean, you know, you have Bobby Hobson we talked about, but Troy Bowe's right there. I've heard that name. Synonymous with greatness. I mean, I never saw him play, uh, but I heard that he's explosive, could score the ball, great ball handler, athletic, lateral movement off the charts, just a great athlete. Um, so let's touch on some of his great highlights Please during do. his Bridgehampton career with the Killer Bees. Won two state titles. First team all Long Island, 1986-1987. All county, three years in a row. All New York State first team, three years in a row, 1985 through 1987. He played on the Empire State team for Long Island in the Empire State games two times. That's impressive. They only take 10 players from Long Island for each, each of those uh, tournaments. Good. New York State Small Schools Player of the Year in 1987. McDonald's All-American Honorable Mention 1987. He's, he's out there doing Street and Smith's Honorable Mention. 
So, you know, all American status right here. You're stupid out there. Yeah. So then after a great high school career, he went and played bas college basketball at the University of Hawaii, where he was the WAC assist leader in 1991. And he made the second team all WAC in 1991 as well and completed his career as the all-time leader in assists with 412. So a great, great college career right after a great high school career. That's amazing. He goes all the way to Hawaii, which he's a legend for that. <laughs> just, to, just to think outside the box and go play there. Forget, forget even playing, just going there. And, he went super far away. And experiencing that. You're in Hawaii, bro. So hats off to him for even selecting that school. But then going to the Western Athletic Conference and doing your numbers and killing it, like you're definitely squarely in the top 10. 100%. Yeah, he's one of the names that ring out even in Amityville when I talk to God. He's one of the toughest guards I've seen and played against in there. Because remember, Bridgehampton's a small school, but they played on the stage and beat some of the big dogs. So that's what makes them even more special. And he's one of the top guys to be there. Oh, definitely. It's, it's super impressive what that school accomplishes with the pipeline of talent. And he's one of those guys. Forget the pipeline of talent. They have 12 boys in the school. <laughs> so that means everybody has a jersey. If you yep. are a boy, you are on the team. And we're right. going to find a role for you. So hats off to Pooh Jack and whoever else has been coaching these guys with just this limited amount of players and competing with everybody. Totally agree, man. For so, so impressive. Troy Bo, you're one of the legends. Congratulations, well-deserved. Number seven, this is a fascinating one once we did this research. Mr. West Korea from Bellport, class of 1980. Yeah, so we're back to Bellport, man. It's a tough program over the years. Great history. Um, there wasn't a ton on West Korea's high school career career on, on, on the internet, uh, but everyone we cross-referenced said he's on the list. Yeah. And his name kept coming up. And the one thing I did find out about him was that he was all Long Island in 1980. Yeah. Um, but then the next level things, you know, there's different things that put you on a different level. And this is one of them. He played professionally in Puerto Rico for 16 years. So the, the longevity of his career. Um, and then he played for the Puerto Rico national team. So when you couple those two things and what I've heard about his high school career from you and other people, he's top 10, man. Yeah, you know? he's, top, he's top 10. He's about six, five or so. From what I hear, Allen Houston style of a game, really, really, really smooth game, can shoot the ball. Puerto Rican legend. He's a legend over there from what I heard, also played against the dream team wow. you know, for his national team. So he's connecting the dots of basketball royalty. So he's basketball royalty for the East End of Long Island. <laughs> he deserves it. And Bellport is well represented on this list. My goodness. As they should be. What a strong tradition. Uh, number six, I know. I haven't seen this name in the papers personally a lot of times. A lot of times. So he has to be squarely in the top 10. We got Mr. Mo Manning, Bridgehampton, class of 1998. What we got? Yeah, Bridgeham Killer Bees again. You know, Mo Manning, he accomplished everything on the high school level. Great, great player. You know, it was real hard, I think, for us to choose between him or Troy Bo as, as higher. But I just feel that Mo Manning had less talent with the, with what he did. And um, it is, but you're, you're, you're splitting hairs here. But yeah, let's man. just go through Mo Manning's resume, man. It's, it's legendary. All Long Island first team three times, 1996 through 1998. All county three times, all state three times, class D state player of the year three times, three straight New York state class D state titles. So he achieved everything at the highest level. Um, you know, I, I played against his team multiple times. I feel that he was so good that he took a team with less talent than most other teams and brought them the greatness, man. And like, that's what makes him a great player. It was yeah. how he in, improved the level of everyone else's game around him, even if they weren't the best players. That's a fact. And, super high IQ on the basketball court. Um, you know, he went to go play at um, Suffolk Community College with Rich Race, and he won two National Junior College championships, 2003, 2004. And that was after taking five years off from the game. So he basically was out of shape, 
had to get back in shape. Play and he did with Mo Dubs. He put that work in. You know, he dominated. And Coach Race told me that he has the highest basketball IQ of pretty much anyone he's ever coached. And I and I don't deny it because you just saw what he's able to accomplish. Just super smart on the court. Always under com- control, composed. Just a brilliant mind on the court, man. That's high praise from Coach Rick, uh, Rich Race because he's been around everybody. He's been around everybody, so that's high praise for him. And like you said, man, he has an illustrious career, a strong resume. He's etched in history out on the East End. I remember hearing that name all the time and seeing his face all the time, even in Amityville. So well-deserved. He's our number six guy. Now, these guys are different. This is the top five. This is why everybody's here. This is the top five. I don't think we got this wrong, nope. in my opinion. Nope. There's a couple of things that we see as we continue to get towards the top five that level you up. And there's levels to it. That's correct. So let's get right into it, man. Number five, we got Mr. David Russell, Bellport, class of 1979. Cool. Uh, he's a great, great player from what I've heard. I didn't know anything about him until I did research. And every person we cross reference, he was top five, if top. not the top player. If but, not. you know, that like, like, like that I heard from people on. So Absolutely. Let, let's touch on his great career first and foremost. Um, Three-year varsity player, one-year JV player. I don't know why he was ever on the JV. Um, he must have been scoring 30, 40 points a game on JV. I'm going to say he averaged about a good 72 <laughs> per game on JV. <laughs> so that must have been like recess for him. So yeah. Suffolk County Hall of Fame, okay, inducted into that. All Long Island two years in a row. And as you know, that's tough to make it two years in a row. He did it in 1978, 1979, first team. He won three league championships and a Suffolk County championship. So an overall Suffolk County championship, that's impressive. He's winning. Um, Suffolk County player of the year. First team all New York State. But the kicker is New York State Player of the Year. That's and there was only one player back then. There was no classes. It was one player. So he was that player. Um, that's strong. Yeah, so he just had a strong, strong high school career. That was followed up by when he attended St. John's uh, University, named Freshman of the Year in 1980 in the Big East Conference, and that's a tough conference. Um, honorable mention All-American and All-Big East team while at St. John's and was inducted into St. John's Hall of Fame for basketball. And then after college, he played professionally in Europe, including 13 years in Spain. So just a long, long career across the board. Man, and Spain is a high level. That's a high level league. This, this, the top five, top five. That, that's that. That is a super strong resume, and a great guy. You know, he. We, we've talked to him. You know, what I mean, through this process, and he's chimed in and been very respectful given his opinion and everything like that, well-deserved. <laughs> like, once you, like once we seen a couple of things, it jumped off the page and I was like, you're squarely in the top five. We, we'll come to you, come back to you later. He's one yep. of them. <laughs> yeah, we'll come back to you later. Number four, he's also one of those guys too. Number four, Mr. Kenny Wood, East Hampton, class of 1989. Yes, we're, so we're back to the Bonnikers over here. So Kenny Wood led East Hampton to the state basketball championship in 1989. Strong. Inducted into the East Hampton Hall of Fame. He scored 2,613 points in high school, a Long Island record that stood for 20 years until Ryan Creighton broke it. So number 16 broke it in 2009. Um, Two-time All Long Island player in 1988, 1989. Um, So he had a great, great high school career. After high school, he attended Richmond University um, and became the 12th leading scorer at Richmond um, and was inducted into their Hall of Fame. Um, and he scored 1,427 points in college. He had a great college career. Wow. Um, and then after that, he played professionally overseas in Spain and South America. So overall, just a long, illustrious career, as, as you stated. Absolutely. That's illustrious for sure. I mean, winning at every level and cooking. Like, he's a bucket. He, 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 and, 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 and again... He's one of those legends that everybody knows. Everybody yeah. knows, not just on the East End, everybody knows that name. Yeah, and then he had that upset, right, in the NCAA tournament 
Absolutely. We got to touch upon that. He had that 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 upset with the Richmond Spiders, 15 seed versus a number two seed, Syracuse. And if I'm not mistaken, they had Cycli on that team, Billy Owens, and, you know, Sherman. Duck. They had a squad. If you're a two seed, you know, you're pretty much a top 10 team. Bracket buster. <laughs> he was one That's of those right. guys. So hats off to him being a legend out there at number four for us on this list. Number three, Mr. Howard Wood, East Hampton, class of 1977. We got to talk about this resume. Yeah, so this was, you know, it was tough trying to put Howard or, Ke or Kenny, but Howard, you know, as we'll get into it, there's a certain separators and we'll talk about those. So Howard Wood, class of 1977, that Wood family's deep with talent. Uh, class of 1977, led East Hampton to a, a state title as well in 1977, inducted into the East Hampton Hall of Fame, two-time All Long Island, 1976-1977. So same resume so far as Kenny Wood. Wow. Then after high school, Howard Wood went to play at the University of Tennessee and had a stellar career, played with Dale Ellis. We all know Dale Ellis. We do. Um, you know, Top shooters ever. Yeah. Made the marksman. Yeah. Yeah, marksman, man. So at Tennessee, he made the Sweet 16, played for Tennessee from 78 to 81, two-time All-American, I mean, sorry, second-team All-American as a senior, and also was a key player on the first ever NCAA tournament Sweet 16 team for the Volunteers. That's history right there. That's strong. All-American, second team? Yeah. We're talking about everybody. That's right. We're talking about everybody. only taking five people per team, I, I think. So he's yeah, top, top 10. In the country. That's right. So... Finished career at Tennessee with 1,201 points. So scored over 1,000 points and had 595 rebounds. So now the separator for us, I thought, was when we said, okay, he was selected by the Utah Jazz with the fourth pick in the second round of the 1981 NBA draft. And he only played one season in the NBA, followed by several years in Spain's Premier League. But you drafted NBA. That's the separator for me, and that's why he's number uh, three. He was not only drafted, he put the jersey on. It's locked right. in. He's an All-American, an All-American at Tennessee, a SEC school, and goes to the Sweet 16. That's legendary. That's a monster separator. And what the heck is going on with the Wood family? They got <laughs> two guys in the top five. Yep. That's an amazing household, man. So all the flowers just to that family, too much. That's too much. Because like you said, going into high school, they got their joint is almost parallel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so God bless them. You know what I mean, and well deserved. And didn't hear Howard Woods' name, Howard Woods' name until you know, not a lot until this. That's so right. this is what really, you know, what I'm saying, made me real excited about this is learning some of the information about the people that I didn't know that much. Totally agree. For me, it was in top five. It was David Russell and Howard Wood. I'd never heard of them. That's so, a fact. And, and not only did we not hear about it, in our top five. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Number two. These dudes cannot be moved right here. This is Mount Rushmore for the East End. Right here, these guys are the pinnacle of the top. We got number two, Mr. Foots Walker, Southampton class of 1970. Yeah, we're back to the Southampton Mariners. Um, Man, Foots Walker, that name is legendary in the East End. Um, you know, the one thing I'd say about Foots is when we won the state title in 1998, I was like, uh, you know, it was after the season and we were meeting as a team and we were going to go to the gym and, and Coach Race had us all go to a classroom. And we walk into the classroom and none other than Foots Walker's in there, man, wearing a Southampton shirt. And he was such a nice guy, man. He congratulated us, shook our hands, took pictures with us. Humble, humble man. You wouldn't even know he played in the NBA. And um, just a real great guy. So I wanted to mention that before I kind of talked about his accolades and what his resume looks like, because right. I always remember that as a kid, that meant a lot to me and my teammates, um, because he had accomplished a lot and he wanted to say, you know, you guys did great. And it was a reminder to him of like what he accomplished. So um, resume, man, top score for three consecutive seasons on that historic team that won 61 games in a row. Um, longest win streak on Long Island in history. Uh, there was no state tournament back then, so he won a couple county titles. But I can tell you, if if there was a state title, he would have won at least one or two. He and 
you know, he had the best backcourt with him and Ronnie Kitchen Baxter. I mean, Kitchen killer Baxter, Baxter. Like the Foots and Kitchen. Yeah, that's too much. Killer. That's yeah. too much. Foots and Kitchen back there, bro. They they were saying right in the, in the article I read that some teams couldn't even get the ball over half court. Just them two, like everybody yeah. else, chilling. They can sit yeah. in the on the floor. Yeah. These yeah. two right here, Foots and Kitchen. Yeah, man. But but this resume, man. If uh, Suffolk County Hall of Fame, man, class of nineteen ninety one. All Suffolk, all Long Island, all American. Two-time all Long Island player, 1969-1970. But this tidbit right here, man, received offers to play at over 100 colleges. This is back in 1970. There's no internet. There's no TV that's showing you him playing. There's no phones, like the portable phones that people can call each other. That's you know, you just have the landlines, you know, word of mouth. How does everybody know that guy? Like, like. As soon as they hear the information off of that guy, that's what yeah. it came out to be. So a great, great, great high school career. Then um, he went on to attend Vincent's co junior college first upon graduation in 1970. And in his sophomore year, he led them to the national junior college championship. And then he transferred to West Georgia college where he led them to the NAIA championship in 1974. So I assume it was like a conference title or something. Yeah. But the cool thing, is that he played alongside NBA Hall of Famer, the legend Bob McAdoo can do in college. How? How are they teammates? <laughs> <laughs> Bob McAdoo and Foots? Yeah. That's a headache for a team right there. Jeez. Yeah, so he, he had a great college career. Then after that, he was drafted in the second round of the NBA draft in 1974. Spent 10 seasons in the NBA. Um, first Cleveland Cavalier player to ever record a triple-double ever achieved that in 1979. That's amazing, because we know whose franchise that really belongs to. Yeah. Mr. LeBron you know? James, so he's right there with him. Yeah, so and then he retired from professional basketball in 1985. So one of the best lines I've heard about him was from Bob Vacca, who was on our list, yeah. who said, I've never seen anyone get more out of their God-given talent than Foots Walker. He just kept getting better too, all through college on his way to the pros, and I think when you look at his resume, that, that's what it shows, man. He got better. I think that's a valid statement by Bob Vacker. That's that that is the thing of legends. So he cemented in, right. in basketball, Long Island basketball. We kick basketball. Foots Walker is a name that will forever ring out. That's right. God legend. Love that man. He is a legend and well deserved to be number two. But number one is the king of kings of this list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and I got some information that I didn't know by doing this. So this 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 was this was a joy. This was a joy doing this with you, man. I must say, man, you are a professional. You I were, appreciate that. You were super thorough on getting this information, communicating with me, cross-referencing with all your people in the midst of your busy schedule. Because you are you're, you're globe trotting, man. You're traveling here. You're doing in the midst. So this is beautiful. And not only are you just a historian, but you're also one of the legends in here, man. So hats off to you again. But number one. Yes. Number one, Mr. Randy Smith Bellport, class of 1967. Belfort Clippers, man, they ring strong and tough, man. They're all over this list, as, as you mentioned earlier. Um, he, he unfortunately passed away, I believe, in the early 90s. Um, so, you know, hopefully his family or his friends can kind of see what, what we're talking yeah, about yeah. here because he yeah. was a great, great player, athlete, person. And um, I just wanted to mention that first. Number 32, retired by Belport. I believe his name is on the court at Belport. Um, inducted into Suffolk Sports Hall of Fame. Inducted into the Buffalo Sports Hall of Fame. Wow. All Long Island in 1967. Now, he was a great athlete. I think on this list, he might be the best athlete overall. Like, in high school, he was a standout in soccer and basketball and set the state high jump record of six feet, six inches. And he also cleared, maybe not in a meet, but I read that he cleared six feet, ten inches in high school. So this dude was just a leaper. <laughs> I mean, just a great athlete, uh, from what I've heard from other people, too. Wow. That's just high school. Attended Buffalo State University. An outstanding all-around athlete, earning All-American honors in – basketball, soccer, and track. So it's one thing to be an All-American on the high school level, but to do it in three sports on the college level, you're just different level here. Different. Um, 
And then he led Buffalo State to three straight conference championships, including a trip to the Final Four of the NCAA Division II tournament in 1970. So, you know, he's had a great career, you know, probably in line with the other top five, right, yeah. through college. Yeah. But now this is where the separators begin. And, and like, that's why we put him at number one. The level. Drafted into the NBA in 1971, I believe, in the first round. Wow. From 1972 to 1982, he played in every regular season game, a then record 906 straight games. He's an iron. iron. He's an iron. iron. Yeah. Give, just give me my give me my low cut Chuck Taylors <laughs> and let me hoop. <laughs> I will be there. Exactly what he did. You know, he played for the Buffalo Braves, the Cleveland Cavaliers, and the Atlanta Hawks in NBA. So three teams. Wow. Um, 12-year NBA career. So he didn't just do it for one year, didn't do it for two, did it for 12. But these last two things, in my mind, are why he's number one. And, and it has to be number one. Scored over 26,000 points during his career with an average of 17 points a game. Bro, that's a high-level NBA player, dude. This guy <laughs> in, in, in the Hall of Fame that averaged that. Like, you played 900-plus games in a row, so he probably played more, you know, give or take. And every time he's on the court, it was 17. That's amazing. And the last thing I want to say about him is, and this is like the coup de grace, most valuable player of the NBA All-Star game in Atlanta in 1978. The best player from the game. That's the mic. the best league in the world. That's the mic drop. That's it? That's the mic drop right there. Star of stars, crown him. <laughs> Congrats, <laughs> crown him the champ. That right there blew my mind. I did not know that was a thing. And then I really didn't know he scored that many points. Yeah, I didn't know that either until we did the research. I was, that, that's a lot of points. Like, you, you know. Average 17 a game. Yeah. Now, you, average 17, you average 17 a game at high school, you're a good player, an excellent player. You average 17 in the NBA, top of the list. That's where I put you. <laughs> and you that's know? over 12 years. Like, can you imagine if you had another eight years? Game. And he don't miss a game, bro. Like, he don't even miss a game. That's not even, you know, I had one year where I averaged 17. You're going to congratulate that, bro. Either I do this. This is what I do. Yeah. That's amazing, bro. Right there from your backyard, dude, at East End. You got, right. you got a legend right there. All these names are legendary in their neighborhood, but just as a collection of players and people from that area is beautiful to see. This is probably the first time that all these names have been mentioned together. Yeah, that's a good point. Together. Yeah, they've been mentioned in pieces, but together at one time, highlighted. I don't think it's ever been done. It's never been done in my lifetime. I've never seen anybody do it. Yeah. It's we, been fun, man, to do this because, you know, when you brought it to me saying, Bronson, you know, would you, would you do this with me, man? You know, yeah, man, like I, I revised my schedule to do this stuff because it's important to me to like share the history, learn the history myself. I didn't know it all. Uh, but to give people their flowers, man, because I do a lot of that and you, you do it with your own show. Yep. I do a lot of that now to people that I care about because you just never know when everyone's going to be gone, man. That's a fact, man. And, and you included you. You I mean, you included as a legend, like. You're very modest, is what I'm trying to say. You're a very modest guy. You like to give flowers to everybody else, but this was an opportunity for us to highlight you as well, man. You are included and rightfully that. so. You know what I'm saying? You rightfully so, man. You're one of those guys, man. So to congratulations to all of the names. The honorable mention, all the way up to the King of Kings, Mr. Randy Smith. Yeah. And David Russell himself said that Randy Smith should be number one. Yes, he did. I, I think that also cemented it for me. On top of the NBA stuff we talked about, man, when David Russell said that, I mean, I was locked on, in. When I, when I heard that he was there, man, he's locked in. Like, that, yeah. that's hard to beat. Now, yep. Who else is there? All, who else was an all-star, let alone the MVP of the game? Yeah. Nobody. That's impressive. Super impressed. So that's cool, man. That, from that area, man, you got all this collection of talent, even up to this day, man. We got a couple guys on the list that are playing to this day, man. So underappreciated, but not anymore. We're going to give flowers. And from this day forward, we want to make sure that everybody is going to know uh, about what's going on in the East End. 
Definitely, man. And it, it was great to kind of highlight all the different decades, too. We did the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000, 2010. Yeah. So we, we did six different decades. We did. So. We did. And you can even say uh, seven because we got somebody from 2020. That's right. That's right. Yeah. We got somebody. So it worked out well. I mean, we didn't plan it that way, but just how the players came out, huh. we did the research. That, you know? That's how it shook out, man. But it just shows that, you know, there's a lot of strength out there. There's a lot. And hopefully this can galvanize, you know, some of the youth. Definitely, you know definitely. I mean? I mean, you know, it's good to know the history, man. I'm glad I learned a lot of it when I was a kid on some of the guys like Kenny Wood, Foots Walker. Um, I really didn't know Randy Smith as a kid, but like I definitely knew Bobby Hobson and Troy Bo. you know. This is growth. This is growth. We, uh, we Both of us grew by just learning a little bit more and hopefully other people will and see the value in taking this information and passing it forward. That's all we definitely. want. So again, man, I can't thank you enough, man, for sharing this platform with me and getting this information and taking time out of your schedule, you know what I mean? To be able to choreograph this together, man. And I think we did an awesome job. I feel good about it. We're going to get this information out on the social media platform so people get an opportunity to see it and talk about it and debate it and everything like that. And hopefully this will be able to you know, bring some people together. And like you said, celebrate everybody while they're here. Yeah, that'd be awesome. So I appreciate you having me on for, uh, to do this, Tristan. Much love, man. Until All right, next be good. Time. Have a good one. Thanks. Peace. All right. Peace.